In your headlines, Minister of Agriculture launched an agro-grant incentive program, junior achievers have completed this year's round of exercises, and a very serious accident over on North Caicos has left two young men seriously injured. From the PTV Broadcasting Headquarters in Providencial is your number one source for news. I'm Erica Pinales delivering the latest from across the country, this Wednesday newscast right to your door. Newswatch starts now. On February 3rd, 2022, over on the luscious island of North Caicos, the Honorable Josephine Connolly, Minister of Agriculture, launched an agro-grant incentive program for North and Middle Caicos. Here are the details on what this program involves and how you can benefit. The idea behind the grant incentive is to encourage new and existing farmers who wish to invest in modern farming technology or other upgrades on their farms to resist the effects of the changing weather patterns, reduce labor resilience, introduce efficient use of water, reduce cost of production, improve health and safety as well as food safety. This is indeed a great day for the Twin Islands. You know, growing up in North Caicos, we go to the field, we eat all of these good stuff. This is the time now for us to share this with the rest of the Texas Caicos Islands and the tourists. So I, I applaud uh, Honorable Connolly and Invest TC for this great initiative with the MSME program and the Agro Ground. Let's capitalize on this. Let's see if we get all of this money for Northern Middle Caicos. With the introduction of this program, farmers will now have the opportunity to access funding through the Farmers Assistance Program. And our goal is to develop and create business opportunities to promote small businesses and ensure that all of our people, no matter the island, the knowledge, the skill that can make a decent living can benefit from the wealth that we are experiencing. Agriculture and food security are major issues for us. We can plan to invest heavily in food. We plan to invest heavily in food and in food production. We are going to make sure that the people who work in the food production, planting, fishing, processing, transporting goods from one place to another, whatever it is, we will make sure that you can earn a good living and a decent living. Agro development and food security is key to building a sustainable country. The government has said, and with the various challenges and pandemic now being faced, it is important to invest in the agricultural sector. We believe that through the development of the agricultural sector, through the promotion of farming, straight from planting, processing, selling, at any stage, you must have the opportunity. You must have the help. You must have the guidance you must have a pathway. This is the foundation of this agro ground that we passed in cabinet last week and that we will unveil today. This is for you farmers. This is for you farmers of North Caicos. My government has committed 250,000 United States dollars. This is the first stage take advantage of it. The program is a collaboration with Invest Turks and Caicos in which farmers will be able to apply for different grants and receive up to $20,000. This grant for registered farmers is for registered farmers to give you a boost, to push your farm ahead, perhaps assist in purchasing a tool, a piece of equipment, even paying for laborers. This is created to give you that boost. Now, I said registered farmers, but there are some of you who are not registered, um, who, not, who hasn't registered yet, but you will register today. The event in North Caicos was used as a fact-finding and information-sharing session. North Caicos, I really want to see you succeed. And my priority, our priority as a government, is to start here first. Most of the farmers are here. So you are first on this list. And I will be back and forth to ensure that everything is going right and that you are happy with the program. This is for you. This is, this in addition to the MSME grant will provide the motivation many of you need to move forward. I expect great things from you farmers. 
and for those who wish to enter into the farming, and even those who are body farmers, keep their backyard gardens going. You will also, from the MSME program, the backyard farmers will also be able to um, um, assess this program through the MSME program. So we're covering everything here for you today. So together, we will increase local food production and ensure decent living for all. And it is my pleasure to launch this agro and center program to the Turks and Caicos Islands, but most importantly to you, the people of the Green Islands, North and Middle Caicos. In this session on the Green Island, farmers were told about their options, what they need to qualify, and how they can apply. After some feedback from farmers at this session, Honorable Josephine responded, assuring them that North Caicos is indeed on top of her list of priorities. When my government came into power, we've decided one thing. We're going to focus our attention on the Twin Islands, Grand Turk, and South Caicos. Those are the three islands that really need some assistance. And I can assure you that whatever we have to do to make it easier for you, the people of North Caicos, we're gonna do just that. Labor, yes, I understand your labor issue. And I'm sitting here and I can feel, I feel your pain. I heard all your stories. And I, I listened to um, um, Reverend Missy. Uh, I can really, um, I know what he's talking about when he's talking about farming, because growing up, I had, we had 10 cows, four pigs, um, 150 chickens, um, four donkeys, and we had to do it, and that wasn't easy for us to do. Um, so I understand and I can resonate with what he is saying when it comes to, um, you know, looking at farming. So the thing it is, we're here, we heard it all, and we're gonna go back to the drawing board. I'm gonna speak to uh, my minister, and we're gonna, um, but we assure you that we're gonna give you the tools you need to succeed. This is not, I'm not paying lip service to this. I'm gonna do it for you, the people of North Caicos. You're on my priority list to get this done. A very serious accident over on North Caicos has left two young men seriously injured. Here's what Newswatch knows of the very unfortunate ordeal. After 6 p.m. on Tuesday, February 8th, Newswatch received word out of Whitby, North Caicos of a serious accident involving two men, the driver and passenger of a pickup truck. Newswatch received word that one of the men in his 30s and the other in his early 20s were seriously injured and flown to Providenciales around 8 p.m. Tuesday night. The 20-year-old, we are told, is to be flown abroad for more extensive medical evaluation based on the seriousness of his injuries. Persons who are on the scene relayed that the men were reportedly attempting to swerve out of the way of traffic that was going the wrong way on that stretch near Big Josh Bar when the driver lost control of the vehicle, sending it flipping before an abrupt stop. Don't go anywhere. More news watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providenciales, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. A 
As World Wetlands Day came to an end, the Turks and Caicos National Trust hosted cleanups in Providenciales and Grand Turk for the safeguarding and restoring of our wetlands. On Saturday, February 5th, the National Trust hosted a cleanup where they got members of the community involved in the initiative to preserve the environment. We are here at Wheeland Pond cleaning our wetlands in celebration of World Wetlands Day, which was observed on February 2nd. The Turks and Caicos National Trust has partnered with the Department of Environmental and Coastal Resources and we're joined by members of the community to support this cleaning up of our wetlands. Wall could explain to Newswatch that the National Trust chose the Wheeland Pond as their target for the cleanup as it is one of the most important hosts of biodiversity on island. Wheeland Pond is one of the most important areas in Providenciales in regards to wetlands. It supports a lot of biodiversity and life and is important to many members of the community members that live here in Wieland. She told Newswatch that the National Trust chose to partner with the DECR as they share the same interest and passion for the environment and the importance of keeping it clean. The Turks and Caicos National Trust and the DECR both partner on the Darwin Plus um, safeguarding and restoring the wetlands of the Turks and Caicos Islands. In this, we actually try to protect our wetlands. We've had um, numerous collaborations, both cleaning our wetlands as well as planting mangroves inside of this area. In celebration of World Wetland Day, the National Trust and the DECR partnered to create a series of media to post on their various social platforms in an intent to educate the public on the importance of environment conservation, among other things. So with the Turks and Caicos National Trust and the DECR actually collaborated once again in creating a series of media to post on our media platforms to educate the public and raise awareness about our wetlands not only of that but it's important to buy its importance to biodiversity and life as well as its importance to us as people of the Turks and Caicos Islands and how it contributes to us as a people and our culture and our heritage. Newswatch also got the opportunity to hear feedback from a member of the community who was in participation at the cleanup director of Cardinal Points TCI who shared with Newswatch her feelings surrounding the cleanup. I'm excited to be here, not only wearing my brand with my company, but also to give back to this great initiative. The Wheeland Pond is such an important, important part of the environment, and it's such an important part of our ecosystem. And to be here, to be able to participate with um, the Clement Howell High School students, it's a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. So it's, an, it's exciting. She shared that she saw the ad about the Wheeland Pond cleanup surfacing on social media, and as she saw it, she immediately decided to join in on the great initiative. I saw the ad on social media, and once I saw it, I knew I wanted to get involved, and I knew I had to get involved, just giving back and playing my part in terms of um, enhancing the environment and even um, sustainability in the Turks and Caicos. She later shared her thoughts on the importance of projects such as the cleanup and her feelings of disappointment as a result of seeing the amount of trash being collected. I thought the outcome was great and um, I was a bit disappointed to see the amount of trash that we actually had to collect. And it's disappointing to see in 2022 that people are not where they should be environmentally. So hopefully this will be um, a learning curve, a learning experience, not only for us, the volunteers, but also for the people of the community. I think there needs to be more accountability and people need to buy in to the program. It's not all about getting volunteers to come and clean your community, but you have to get involved. You, you have to have pride in your country and you have to have pride in your community in order to maintain it. Sustainability is a big factor and sometimes I don't think we realize how important sustainability, it, sustainability in terms of um, environmental sustainability. It's an important. We're a small country. Climate change is going to affect us first and I don't think we realize not only the devastation that's involved, but also the importance of playing our part in making a difference. Finally, she shared with us how she wants to see more community involvement as it makes a huge difference in the environment. You have to get involved. You have to be the change that you want to see. It's not a one man's job. It's a group effort. And I encourage the corporate community to get more involved. Send out your volunteers because it's one thing to write a check, but to send the manpower, the human resources that you need to mobilize these projects, it's a huge thing and it makes all the difference. Don't touch that remote, we'll be right back. Coming up next is your weather forecast. Sister Craft Market Souvenir Shop. Come and visit us for your travel keepsakes, keychains, artwork, t-shirts, clothing, jewelry, and many more. 
We're located at the Lower Bite gas station in Providencialis, and you can contact us at 649-341-3070. That's 649-341-3070. Sister Craft Market and Souvenir Shop. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providencialis, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Participants of the Let's Move TCI program will be able to engage in live workouts very soon. In-person workouts begin next week, starting off with Grand Turk on February 15th. Next up, Providenciales will have a go on February 16th. Then it'll be South Caicos and North Caicos' turn to feel the burn on February 17th. All workouts will be at 6 p.m. The public is reminded of some workout essentials inclusive of an exercise mat, towel, water bottle, comfortable clothing, and sneakers. COVID-19 restrictions will be enforced. Registration is required to engage with in-person workouts. Here is the director of the Sports Commission, Jared Forbes, getting into an online workout sesh. For your Sports Authority, I'm Ali Carvey. Here now is the weather forecast for February 10th, 2022. In Grand Turk on Thursday, mostly sunny skies, high 80, low 75, winds east, southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. South Caicos on Thursday, mostly sunny skies, high 80, low 75, winds east, southeast at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos on Thursday, Intervals of clouds and sunshine, high 82, low 75, winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. For Parrot and Pine Key on Thursday, mostly sunny skies, high 81, low 74, winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And on Providenciales for Thursday, mostly sunny skies, high 81, low 74, winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. The sun will rise at 6.24 a.m. and set at 5.45 p.m. High tide, 2.42 a.m. and 3.03 p.m. Low tide, 9.15 a.m. and 9.01 p.m. That's it for the weather forecast. We'll be right back with more News Watch. People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV! We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV.
This story has so much valid information that we thought we'd run it again just in case you missed it. The Premier Honorable Charles Washington Mizek, as chairman of the Board of Governors of the Caribbean Development Bank, made an official visit to the bank's headquarters in Barbados on February 3rd to the 4th of 2022. Accompanying the Premier on this visit was Deputy Premier and Minister for Finance, Trade and Investment, Honorable Erwin J. Saunders, and Permanent Secretary of Finance, Mrs. Ethene Harvey Baston, Deputy Secretary for the Office of the Premier and Public Policy, Mr. Miguel Swan and Mr. Bentley Johnson aide de camp. Newswatch gathers that this was the first official visit since accepting chairmanship in September last year. Dr. Hygienist Leon and strategic advisory team where introductory discussions ensued to give an overview of TCI's economic and financial position and agendas for the financial year 2022-2023. The Premier also met with the operations management team to discuss ongoing and potential technical assistance for the Turks and Caicos Islands and greeted general staff. Speaking on chairmanship of the CDB Board of Governors, the Premier outlined climate justice, water, sewage and sanitization management, and renewable energy as the priority areas of focus for the Caribbean region during his tenure as chairman. Premier Mizik said, as we look to the individual situations of the islands in the Caribbean community, we ought never lose sight of the need for collaborative action. It is critical in forging innovative, sustainable, and cost-effective solutions to regional challenges going forward. It is not enough to rely only on new technologies to tackle developmental challenges and global shocks, but dialogues, sharing best practices, collaborating on strategies and programs that are inclusive can be the difference in improving poor standards of living, tackling socioeconomic issues and delivering equitable prosperity. He further added, I hope that my chairmanship is one that cements us toward the elevation of the socioeconomic standing of all our peoples. And with each successive passing of the baton, we are able to ameliorate the challenges we face, break down the barriers to sustenance and self-actualization, and enable a path that sees only a growth trajectory toward the vertical socioeconomic mobilization of the peoples of our region. While in Barbados, the Premier and Deputy Premier made an official visit to the office of the newly re-elected Prime Minister for Barbados, Honorable Mia Motley. We gather that the Turks and Caicos Islands government values its partnership with neighboring countries in the region and welcomes the opportunity to form relationships that will aid the government in delivering best practice solutions to social, economic and environmental challenges. Newswatch understands that further details as it relates to the Premier's chairmanship are to follow in a joint release from the CDB and the Premier in the coming weeks. That brings us to the end of this edition of The Real News. I hate to leave you so soon, but of course, you can join us right back here every weekday at 6.30 p.m. and tap into our social media platforms at www.ptv8tci.com. I'm Erica Penales, keeping you informed, updated, and affiliated until next time.